Well, today's guest is an absolute treat for Elliot and I, the queen of downhill mountain biking with an endless list of achievements to her name, including the only ever perfect season in World Cup downhill racing. Yeah, it's good. It's pretty good. It's an absolute pleasure to bring in the living legend, Rachel Atherton, <laughs> to Just Ride. Right. How oh are you, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. Fine, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That was a, yeah, introduction. It's Thanks. all right, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I want to just like keep listing off accomplishments and see your face. It's well, so awkward. I mean, it's so weird, like at this time of the season or whatever, you know, like not just not really doing much. And then suddenly you're talking about that again. Well, yeah. That's and your right. voice as well. Well, yeah, maybe. But yeah, I mean, that perfect... it just takes a minute to get your head in, into. Yeah. Not just like shopping and pushing the. <laughs> well, I can see that. Baby how, is, round. how is life? With the babby. No, good, yeah. Yeah, it's sick. Uh, Anna's, well, she's nearly two and a half, so we're through the dark days of, of a newborn <laughs> yeah. and, like, come out the other side and it's, yeah, it's good. She's so fun. It's it's a privilege, really. It's amazing to be able to to have that little human in, in my life and, yeah, I feel really It's changed lucky. you a lot, Rachel, isn't it? Haven't yeah, it? yeah, I it has, love yeah. to see how amazing quick you became like a mum yeah it yeah, was yeah, insane yeah. to see because i've only ever known you as yeah. this, well everyone's only ever known yeah. you as this gnarly gnarly and i mean super gnarly like world cup winning pure downer that's all you that's all you yeah. what you, all you've is, known what, what do you think is uh well, was more yeah. difficult like training like oh, to be or no, not even a contest. Really? <laughs> oh, I, don't, I know what you're even gonna say as well. like, there's no like the easiest thing to be an athlete compared to being a mum oh my gosh yeah to be like in those newborn days you know the relentlessness as an athlete you train like hard and then you rest hard and and that's that's the cycle you're in you know the rest is so important as, a, as an athlete you're competing you you race you know you've got one day absolutely full tilt like it but Monday easy, you it? rest and and you get you've got time as much time as you need and and being a parent like you're running on those same ad like adrenaline, but you've not got that rest. You've not got that time no. to look after yourself. It's relentless, like that's right. 24 seven. And, and that's what kills you really. It's so gnarly. And going the transition from going f from an athlete to, to being a parent was, you know, I struggled for sure. Didn't mean I doesn't, I don't love Anna. Like I love her more than anything. Yeah, that's clear. Anything. Yeah, yeah. But that transition has been so hard just to, you know find who you are like who are you without racing who are you without competing it's well, you're an it's, amazing mum yeah yeah it but surely has made it's hard in this society in this day and age like to to even feel like that's enough you know is it is is you, like I'd, I felt guilty for for just being a mum like I wasn't racing I'm not <laughs> I wasn't training and that I felt so guilty for like not contributing to this or that business or this I'm not pulling my weight like I'm, I'm just a mum and that's like as soon as you start thinking that it's so bad you know is it it's not is it that bad though no but i mean as soon as you let those thoughts like come into your head like right, that's right, not right. enough to be that yeah like she was like oh, anna's old enough now right just you know put her nursery like put her <laughs> finger out like get back to it and i was like oh my gosh she wakes up like four times a night like what? Yeah. i can't do anything you know it's but yeah it's both are amazing and yeah and you did do you're both. lucky because you're men so <laughs> yeah right yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah it's true but like you did do both and you did come back as a mum and actually unbelievably at the start of last <laughs> season you won another world cup and honestly after that achilles injury and that and having a baby i thought you'd never go back to racing but to come back and win you didn't think that you yeah you he's did. texting you, you. Yeah. you did. i know that it's your many, idea I, know many, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was encouraged but i know how many injuries you've had i know what the career you've had i mean yeah it was, I, I hadn't, and that was a big injury and in it what was it, 18 months recovery yeah yeah all that achilles uh, yeah. i mean it's still with me now like mm. if you don't keep on top of the rehab and the strength of that leg you know mm. my calf is emaciated it's mm. awful i'm ashamed of it don't look you know? <laughs> it's so small and skinny my knee pad like it's so annoying like is riding ev riding all day my knee pad just falls down on that leg because it's so, no so much smaller yeah i was talking to it's my really my trainer about that because yeah, like my small uh, medium my shoulder is messed up and i was like oh like dude should i should i get surgery he's like no dude like you you got to pay to play like that yeah. is just what happens when you're an yeah, athlete people say, is, like, is it ever going to be the same again and i'm like absolutely not yeah no, that's yeah, it yeah. now it's always going to be worse right yeah. it's just the way it is you know it's a, it's a price you pay 
but it's that like, hard to accept as well I find it yeah, like, my yeah. body don't work like I want it to it is it is all. hard to accept like uh, my legs were the only thing that were alright and now <laughs> there's only one that's alright now yeah that Achilles injury like that was really hard to swallow like well you didn't even crash yeah mm. it was just a it landing just on, a, on a crap jump right that I wasn't just, built right really yeah but I've blamed everything apart from me well I think I actually <laughs> I even blamed right, the bike though. and it was our bike <laughs> it was too long though it was too long what the jump or the bike? No, the bike. My back end. Was <laughs> oh, too long. was it? And I, I had it was Andorra and then Leger, and I had a new back end. They built me a shorter one. Like my wheelbase was like the same as Minar's for Andorra. It was mad, and it was, was too it? long for me to like properly like, you know, hook around the turns and like carry enough speed out, and which is why I definitely added to the casing of the jump because it was I wasn't going fast enough. But I also blamed the shoes and also the jump. <laughs> the jump was... A lot of people went down on that jump. Yeah, it was, yeah. It wasn't right. It wasn't good enough for a World Cup track. It wasn't. Well, yeah. Nope. Anyway. So I anyway. feel like you've had actually a little bit of time after your career. I want to I want to oh, go... Oh, what? Don't no, say no, that. No, 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 no. After your career. No. Oh, oh my God. Here we go. I'm literally well, in the middle of it. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm this like, is the height of my career. You know what I mean. <laughs> I'm going to get my cut here and leave you to it. I'm like, like traumatized, you savage. know. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so after your career, you've had okay. time to process it. I'm not, I'm I will like, say right no, now, before we got in here, he's like, yeah, I've just been chilling. Yeah, I just, um, it's, yeah, I haven't really done anything. I haven't been, haven't ridden much. And, and next thing you know, we get in here. <laughs> <laughs> no okay so what i mean is like oh god you've had a couple of, let's you've had an off you've had an off season rachel <laughs> fair enough i don't think we can argue with that and do you like have you started to look back on your career like rob was talking about this like perfect season like all of these things are you have has the mindset shifted where you're like not thinking about winning or do you want to race again like yeah where are no you at i know now? what you mean yeah yeah I know what he means as well. It sounded uh, final. We don't actually know that you're not going to race again yet, no, do we? Yeah, I know what you mean. Because, I mean, I in terms of looking back, I look back all the time. Like, that's my favorite hobby is looking back, <laughs> at, my, looking back at my career. Um, but yeah, because I have my mindset. Yeah, when I, before I raced this year, before I raced Venza Hyde, and before I had that win, you know, like it was painful. Like, I'd watch the races while I was injured. And then when Anna was a little baby... I'd watch the races and I, I'd watch them and like, it'd be, you know, a good afternoon of like crying and like being sad. And, and, and it was like, I, I really got into it. Like, cause it, it hurt. I wanted to race. I, I missed it. You know, I felt like that was my place or like, I felt like that was mine to, to win or whatever, even though it wasn't there. And then after the, after lens hide this year, after that win, like I, I, I feel way different now. But yeah. It's definitely like changed my whole perspective on, on racing again and almost scratched the itch really. Like I, I, yeah. I, I kind of knew like I wanted to race again and I wanted to try and win as, as a mom. I try and try and win like after having Anna and then cause I did it straight away. I was like, Oh, that was well, a bit easy. Shit. Like now what? Cause it was so, it was done so quickly and yeah. then it totally changed it, you know, cause and then, then there was, not as much motivation or, or drive. And is that what you felt since the desire now to race yeah. is less than it was at this time last year? Yeah, then? I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. Yeah, it it, it doesn't it, it kind of has a different like weight behind it. Like obviously miss racing hundred percent and miss the, the training. It's more the training I miss, the focus I know what you mean. like that the process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That single like mindset, totally. that focus. You know every day what you're trying to do. You're yeah. trying to be better, you're trying to be faster, you're trying to be stronger and not having that because I trained pretty hard up to Fort William World Champs and and that was just so I just loved the training like I Did you? I really got into it and I was like damn the race is coming closer like I so I didn't want to stop training and then mm. I got hurt and then it changed it but it it was more like just having that focus of you know you're doing your job like you're doing your thing aren't you and without that it's really it's it's really hard to well, I mean it, what else it, it it's all you've known for place. a long, long time, yeah. isn't it? And you yeah. are all in. Dan, when we were doing a piece years ago, Dan said something interesting to me about you. He said, he actually don't take offence here. It was Dan. But he said that you, he said, Rachel's not the best rider, but she's the best athlete. And and that's true. And it rings true when you say you've missed the training. But also to me, like 
Well, I don't agree that you, you you're clearly the best rider to win what you've won. So there's nothing in that. That's, no, I know what that's he means. Big Brother. I know what he means. Yeah, I know what he means. Yeah. But also, you're so clever, Rach. And you, yeah. what struck yeah, me yeah. last year was like you said to me, "Yeah, we went to Lenza Hyder because like I was going to try and win one again, and that was the one to go to because we knew that everyone's levels wouldn't be set." And I was like, "No way!" Like the way, and when I've commentated with you at Hardline mm. and stuff, the way the, which actually blew my mind. Just the detail, just the, you're just, un, you're an unbelievable racer. Like I've never, I haven't spoken to anyone really with your, um, the way you approach racing, like in, I haven't, not the way you do it, not the way you did it. I think it just means like, yeah, I don't know if it's more like, it's probably a bad thing, you know, like means so much to me. Like, it's like an obsession for yeah, you, wasn't it? Yeah. For such a long time. And like Dan always said, like he was never as good at racing as, as I've been or G because he doesn't, he didn't care enough, you know, like. I used to, I used to wake up like, fuck, what are the other girls doing? You know, like, I wonder what Pom Pom's doing like now, and and like, Afi, who cares? Like, what they're doing? <laughs> and I'd be like, oh my god, what are they doing? He never won a downhill, did he? Or did he? he was second no, he was in Villingen, second. won he? Yeah, yeah. One there. thing I've always wanted to ask you about, like, speaking of that, you guys had, so just, I feel like there's a bit of context to provide for like the Atherton family as a whole. Um, oh, yeah. That like, yeah, we start, we just jumped in. I mean, well, I don't even know what this is about. No, I mean, I mean like, where do you? Yeah, like what, what subject do you, do you choose? You know, you know, we're just so good. But, no, um, no. <laughs> I mean, like there's so like yeah, there's now, so many like, things. Yeah. There's so many things. But like <clears throat> the so at one point the World Cup race, the World Cup series had four cross, and then there was men's and women's downhill, and I think it was 2008 in Andorra. Oh. Um, oh, all three yeah. of you guys <laughs> won uh, won your races, yeah. right? Like Dan won four cross, G won Big men's, dog. and yeah. then oh, you won was, women's. Like, yeah, when Alfie won that four cross, that was such a good night. And four, that was gnarly. Like everyone used to really race four cross as well. You know, they'd be racing like to like you wouldn't eat until like midnight the night yeah. before the World Cup finals because the boys were racing four cross. Yeah, yeah. Most people used to do both, didn't they? And yeah, yeah. Dan won that 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 four cross. He was sick at four cross. He was so good. He, just, he, was, he didn't he have was. like yeah. that cut in like that cutthroat edge enough for racing, but when he when he could like get his mind into it, he yeah, was he so was good. He had the skills, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sk yeah. Like, easily on, the skills, on skills. Yeah. just yeah. All, in, all in the mind, yeah. But Dan was like, I think it was like Lopes, maybe Gracia in the final, and like we were like running down the track like alongside them like I was, it was commentating quite long. it was free yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was free oh, wow. screaming oh, like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. bless him, it's yeah. That was sick, and then he actually can won it. And I think there was like a massive like quad, and he like yes, he did, I he, he did like that. the big I quad and like took, yeah, over, yeah. took two people or something. Like uh -huh. yeah, it was yeah. sick. Did you guys think about it? Like so, after Jan won, were you guys like maybe we could do the triple? I think did you guys I remember talk being in the hotel with Dan and like we were eating ice cream with our legs up the wall, and I remember we were talking about it like fuck. Imagine if if I won or G won as well, like. <laughs> How cool would that be, or whatever? But I think it was only until after I won the next day. Right. Then it was G just left in the afternoon, and pressure was on. There was some swear words. We, <laughs> oh, well, we, I think we were filming the Atherton project still then, right. and like all handheld stuff, you know, and uh -huh. like, and most of it was bleeped out for the entire like afternoon. <laughs> but just like, you, you don't really think about it. You, like we've never really thought about any of it. Like you know, you were saying in your like you love stats and like numbers yeah. and, and goals and stuff and like we've always just done it like it that stuff it's only after the fact that you think oh christ you know that that was like it's enough not really something you aim for like we never set out to like oh let's all win a world cup on the same whatever but, you but did. when it's happened and g and i've done the double a few times it's yeah. always been like oh, yeah unreal. Was it when you both became world champs in Valsola? yeah yeah wow. yeah, yeah. 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 Just like, crazy, who does yeah. that yeah josh bryson won the junior men's yeah. huh. and then G and then I won the women's and Dan had broke his collarbone and G then G won the men's. That was and that you know when you talk about so this, sick. it's so hard, it's so, <laughs> so obvious why it's so hard right. for you to step away uh, from yeah. racing. Look at it. Yeah. Look at the history of I your know. family. Yeah. What Not was you, it, your family. What was it like? What were you guys like growing up? Like I don't think I've ever heard <laughs> yeah, you guys. We were cool. <laughs> 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 like uh, was it always super competitive like uh, yeah paint that picture know, just, well we started racing bmx like basically mum and dad broke up dad moved to like a c city town that had a bmx track and we just always go there on the weekends in salisbury was it or not well you, could you come devon, devon further devon, down yeah say, yeah is that right but dan it was dan like he's just he's just like it's just so unique you know like it's, it's all him like he is it, it 
we grew up and there was a scrub land and he just built dirt jumps. Like first he built just takeoffs and then like all the kids got into it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, and mum- Head slappers. They had like headaches. The boys had headaches like all the time. Mum's like, one day mum's like, do you think you should build some down slopes to land on? And they were like, yeah, cool. Yeah, we'll do that. You know, like Dan's just always been the driving force. Like, and he kind of, like I just I wasn't really any I didn't really have a personality I was just whatever Dan like wanted me to be you know <laughs> and he it was his idea like Rachel you'd probably be really good at racing World Cup down here I was like sounds awful like I don't want to do that I just want to play hockey or netball at school like leave me alone and he was like relentless you know you'll be good at it you'll be good at it <laughs> so like, without Dan know. without Dan you probably wouldn't have gone World Cup in your no hundred percent right? yeah I just right? did I just wanted to do what the boys did hundred percent like and that's what you know over the years like, everyone knows like you know you've said it with Claudio on the on the commentary before like no, she's in she was good because of her brothers and I hundred percent I just enjoyed like the retaliation of saying that's not fair yeah. but well i could see it uh, but Actually, like do you know what happened true, that year do you know what happened that year you won every race but were you every race at, at split one you were probably 15 seconds yeah, ahead of people yeah. and it was yeah, the hardest the commentaries finish. in the world <laughs> she's 25 seconds up what do we put this down in claudio like it, yeah i mean it was it, was, it wasn't great commentaries but it was it was difficult and we did get better no but then. like i mean growing up wise like i guess we were like Dan was just like free and like feral, you know, mm. there was no boundaries. Like now. Yeah, hundred percent. Like no <laughs> boundaries, you know, living like in the world, like in the wilderness, building, like creating things for him to do, creating, creating things for us to do. Like we were so free, like we'd build ramps and take it, we'd tow it behind the truck and take it to like slopes around the mountains, around the forest. And we, he, he was just, it was just like we'd build mini bike tracks c90 tracks like we just had like such a free upbringing and then the boys started racing world cups and and they'd come home from all these like foreign far-flung places with all these like souvenirs and chocolate for me and and like and i'd just be like this is exotic life you're living like what yeah, is this i want sure. a part of it yeah. like these number plates he'd come back with and and i was like god i want to go with them like so you were later into it than, yeah than, yeah than the lads I yeah i wasn't aware of that really more well later only because I was younger. Yeah, Pre- like, like a couple yeah. of years behind them, sort of thing. Yeah, they they were starting racing World Cups, and so we, yeah. you know. But we used to like we just lived in the caravan. Like at weekends, we'd go to every single race around the country with Dad. Like we just live there. We just live at the races. Really, we lived at bike races. Yeah, we grew did. up at bike races. Yeah, yeah. Like all our friends, I didn't know anything but bike racing. You know, all the kids at school for us so weird. Just dressed in like these boys' clothes. Like didn't care about the normal things oh, like right. they were just like what are you like are you a boy or a girl <laughs> i used to get so bullied at school for being a boy it was yeah. awful yeah no, so traumatizing oh. like they used to rip me like <laughs> shreds <laughs> i used to wear just dan's clothes like i didn't know like like it was awful <laughs> is that right yeah, but, but the why? racing like gave us that's why it's sad that there's not as especially in the uk like this you know the scene the grassroots scene is is yeah. massive but there is like less and less races and and more bike parks probably which sure. is why like, yeah 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 and, and it Wait, is sad is that how it's going a bit i think it? so yeah. yeah like when we grew up there was no yeah. you know there's no bike parks like that's why the uk no. i think has always been good at, at downhill because if you want to ride a good track yeah. if you want an uplift you you enter the race right. you spent your whole weekend racing because yeah. that's the only only way you could get a sick track with an uplift sure. you know we yeah. didn't have chairlifts like you know europe and canada or whatever yeah Never so you just that. had to race and now you don't have to race you can go to w you can go to bike park wales and you've got a sick track mm-hmm. and an uplift and you don't have to to race spend all your money racing so no. whether it'll change like you know the kind of face of but maybe like the historical like there's there's enough ride the the kind of history is deep enough probably to like inspire the kids that are riding do want to race because they yeah. know it's sick and like they know it's fun but yeah we just growing up was like it was basically just one massive continuous like uplift and like track building 10 year 15 look year at the like career you had from it like you threw yourself head first into it and that you know like I said, yeah like we you moved are pure, uh, right you all oh, you you know like, down a little bit different as you say but like mm. you and g are just the purest races I've almost ever known, like your commitment level, the injuries, you know, and the success is like, it's on another level. Yeah, but I don't know if that's anyone like, else. is it because we're stupid? We just keep doing it. We don't know what else to do. Like we're just <laughs> relentlessly doing it. It's hard to know but what like, else it's, to do. There's some, so many stories, like you said about like what, what we like growing up and like we, when we moved to Langanog, which is where Revolution Bike Park is now or like was, 
and we sold our house that eventually there to the like guys from Revs. And then the other side of Revs is like our track called the bank. And we must have started building that like yeah. two like me, Mum, Affy, and G, Mum helped start building it. Did you? And no now, way. still to this day, Tane trains on it and, and Cade and Chaos, wow. and it's one of their main tracks. Yeah, yeah it's so no, funny. No, why? Yeah, there's so much like that. Like, and Mum helped us build that track, That's like, crazy. probably nearly 20 years ago. Have you, have you thought so about funny. that? It's so funny. Have you thought about the, like, the legacy that you and, and G and Dan, because even for me growing up, British downhill was the thing. Like I was looked, it? yeah. Like I mean, what? Yeah, in like, and, like, yeah, Tracy like and everything is so cool. And, a national yeah. champs. We had a scene. Yeah, like does that resonate time. with you? Like, do you feel like you helped shape British downhill? Um. Well, I mean, only, only to the point of like, no return. No, I don't know. <laughs> well, only, but like people shaped us you know like when yeah. Pete comes to the bike park it's still like fuck Steve's here like God, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool like it's so cool it, and you know I guess you every generation has that like probably effect on the next person but yeah I don't know we just I mean it's given us so much it, it's sort of it's, it's cool lot. like to be able to give back in a little way with the bike park because it's given us yeah everything and yeah given taught me so much and you know giving me a, a yeah life really like i don't know what i'd do no what I you're still done, involved but... in bikes and of yeah. course you got the bike brand as well it's going to keep you tied yeah. in as well isn't it I mean, yeah and it's sick to, to have those things yeah tell us a, tell us a little bit about the actually tell us about the founding story of atherton bikes like i want to know who <laughs> like I, f I have this image of somebody coming in like everyone's chilling out and then like, somebody comes in and is like hey should we uh start a bike company or like how did that do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen like who was the i mean dan like it's definitely always been a dream of dan's like yeah. he's always built these like mad bikes you know he's always putting at school stuff together like welding stuff and he's always had this dream of having a bike company it's always dan's dream i didn't know that like yeah he and there's a you know there's a lad dan stanbridge who we grew up racing yeah, with and yeah, he yeah. raced for like orange and um stuff for quite a long time and he was super clever dude like he, he designs you know medical equipment for hospitals now and him and Affy and Dan Stanbridge would always be like coming up with designs for bikes and always be like sketching stuff and that hmm. Affy always had like a name he always thought it'd be called art bikes because that's well that's Affy and race team it's a bit rubbish so we didn't call it that <laughs> <laughs> but, and we and even up to right before we started Affy and bikes we were always like like me and Dan were like oh, fuck, let's just do a bike company to make sick kids bikes you know for the mm, locals yeah. like, mm. let's do kids bikes and ironically we haven't even done one yet but like <laughs> It, it's definitely always Dan, like with these ideas, and then, but it's so typical to Dan. He's like, "Yeah, definitely, let's hundred percent start a bike company. It'd be so good, so good." And then we start one, and he's like, "Nah, too busy. Sorry." Like, <laughs> he's like, "Nah, I can't do that. I'm too busy." And then everyone else is fucking left to do it, and he's just like onto the next idea. Is that like, right? Which was the bike let's park, get a chairlift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like the bike park. Nah, he does his. He does what his came bits. first, Athlon bikes or the bike park? No, they just came at the same they time, did which is right? so stupid. Yeah. yeah. It was a. Just to me, it was ridiculous. It was, it was wild to see what you were doing, but then I was like, well, "Well, the bike park was like a long time being born. Like that was like typical Dan, like project. Just started it, didn't do anything properly, and just started building all these sick tracks on this guy's land, and like so had like a gentleman's about, agreement. Yeah, and typical Dan, like he's he's like <sighs> the one with the vision and the big ideas, and he just does things. He just gets things done, and like. G and Dan Brown are the ones that do things properly. So Dan just does things and like will build something and then someone else will have to go and like get the permission and right. like do it properly. But he's he's got the vision, man. He's like, it's so hard to contain him, like to 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 get him to do things properly. Like, don't do that. That's not like <laughs> this needs doing first, you know. He's on to the next thing. He's just, yeah, relentless, like eight yeah. percent and he's on. Yeah. And and that's the only way things get done. Like G's always like, you know, we're always and and to the point where like we always want to do things so big and cool and like make them so massive that that it's too big a project so they don't get done so dan's really good at just doing it just starting mm. it and then you just figure it out along the way you know and that's super important like to be kind of like yeah take the risk and just do it well yeah because you can think about things forever yeah exactly yeah you know, yeah i mean i'm guilty of that that's yeah. for sure i was i remember years ago like nigel page he came riding with you on 
because where the Welsh Hardline is is one of your original tracks as well, right? Yeah, yeah, but Pete, it's not Pete, at the bike park that everyone thinks. No, gets that's so right. It's away. Yeah. But Pete hurt himself there, didn't he? Yeah. But I remember that Nigel <laughs> said that that Dan he said is so much better than G. Yeah. Now, as racing mm. goes, yeah. G's got the results. But in your opinion, who was the better? I mean, rider Dan's bike Adam? skills are just because mm. he's like he's he, cooked. He, he's so good. He had so long. He grew up more on the BMX, and like he's he's on a BMX. He's unreal. Like that, he's so uh, sick. Like G's obviously like unreal, but didn't ride as much BMX as Affy. And like Affy's like just skill is so deep and broad, and like he can do anything basically. Still yeah. as well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm. He's forty-two literally today. His birthday. Oh, happy um, birthday, Dan! Yeah. Happy <laughs> birthday, Dan! <laughs> and he's but. It, you know, racing, as we know, is a lot of like, the mental side of it. And it's hugely you know, kind of mental performance, really. And he could, he always, he says himself, he'd always struggle with that mental, like being able to switch it on and like tap yeah. into those skills is, is what's important, really. So, yeah, he always struggled a bit with, with the racing, but on a bike, he's, yeah, he's sick. And Did he you, loves it. Like, that's, he just loves yeah. it. He's and, almost happier. Yeah. He's, I can't see him any happier than he's what he's so doing He's so happy now because he said he's been waiting his whole life to do this. You yeah. know, racing right. was just like yeah. kind of filling time till he, he got the opportunity to do this because you can't do something unless you've had something before it. You know, do you know what I mean? Like a I career exactly, that's yeah. going to lead, it, let you yeah. have that opportunity. Totally. You know, if he wanted to start this bike park 20 years ago, he couldn't have, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. No. So it's been... Yeah, he's kind of just been putting <laughs> putting the effort into racing just until he it was right. like he could do the bike park. Do you have something like that where you're just that racing no. kind of took the time? Racing was always just it. Like, and what do you think of now? Like, do you have anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's sad. Yeah, I think just... about what. <laughs> like, what do you think about now? Like for this year, do you have any? goals i mean i guess like yeah i don't know it's a really bad thing to say like as a female you probably it's not not at all like i was just racing to feel time until i was old enough to have a kid that mm -hmm. but like it's different for men isn't it i think it is no matter mm -hmm. what you say mm -hmm. you know like being a mum is so being a mother is it's never going to be equal like the baby wants the mum like to start with you, you know i didn't want to be away from anna for very long for you know? sure no so it, and it is different but yeah, I haven't got anything really apart from racing. And obviously I love the bike park and stuff and I love the bike company, but it's not nothing like racing, you know. It doesn't make you tick like that. It, mm -hmm. it just doesn't. You lived through racing, didn't you? Really like that. That's your, do you know when your yeah, first World 100%. Cup? Yeah, Do you know when your first World Cup win was? Uh, yeah, 2006 oh, or five. Five. Is that's it? nearly 20. <laughs> well, that so is long nearly ago. 20 years ago. Is it? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because 20, tw 20 yeah, yeah, three. Was, yeah. yeah. 16 years, I think I counted. Is that what it is? Yeah, I got your first oh, win as 05. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Or 15 or something like that. Yeah, years, yeah. almost. Yeah. Winning span last year. 05. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. What made you such a good racer? Like, when you really dig into it, if you were analyzing yourself from the outside, like, why is Rachel Atherton so good? God, I don't know. Good question. Because <laughs> I want well, to know as Chris well. Chris Murray, Tane's <laughs> our coach, or Newt's current coach. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I think definitely like how awful it feels to not win. <laughs> that was You're like, insanely competitive. That's, yeah, that's I a think, given. Yeah, the competitiveness, you know, like winning f f like is so good, but getting beaten is fucking <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> it's honest. horrendous. Like, I, and that's, I've always wondered it. Like, you know, I've said it before, like what, why, you know, like we were loved as kids like we had a nice <laughs> yeah, like what childhood made me this no, way. But like it's true like what have i got to prove like yeah. i mean i guess mum and dad had a like rough like you know sort of few years but it's not like you know we didn't have to get out the ghetto like it's not like yeah. m&m like do you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so I what you. is the reason like there's obviously something in athletes that there's needs something... to prove like that you're the best cool yeah, well, yeah. yeah. very yeah. very different in you three in you, in you siblings there is you are on another level like we said of like mm -hmm. winning of no one no one <laughs> no, no that's one, not true I, that's not true i think it is really? i don't know anyone who's had the injuries you guys have had yeah. come back one like you do i mean it's just actually yeah you live it but from the outside world it's mad to watch and that's true yeah because i remember one shoulder injury and i went to the rugby club like wasps or something in down south and there was a, their top rugby player had, had the same shoulder surgery and in the end he retired and I was like 
<laughs> That's so Dude. gnarly. I was like, what? It's like, this is like... Light white, so soft. Yeah, it's like, had a bad shoulder injury, had the surgery, like, I couldn't really cope with it, and then you retired. Lot, how many shoulder like, surgeries did you have? How many shoulder <laughs> surgeries did you have? It was like, was it eight or nine oh, or something? God, so many, yeah. It was bonkers, So wasn't many. It? Yeah. And that, that was probably it. Like, I think, you know, t- definitely that add, added to it, because I got to the point where I wanted to win so much I was riding so fast, too fast for my body to keep up with. Mm. And I hadn't done the training like when I was young, you know, and the winning was so good, but I smashed myself to pieces like again and again and again. And I remember thinking like this, something's got to change. Like either I've got to accept that I'm not going to win a lot because I'm not willing to go so fast. Mm. I, I'm not willing to to risk the injuries or I've got to make myself so good and train like so much more and be so fast that I can ride at eighty percent safely and still win, wow. and like that was like, and that was, was a that couple, a goal? Yeah, it definitely. What a that was, crazy that was way really, to think. I mean, do you think that that yeah. was what allowed you to be so consistent to win those? Like, yeah, 14 I think so. In a row? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, been like, I guess I was on the cusp of like it changing from, you know, like we we definitely took the training like a lot, like way more seriously, quite quite a lot earlier than a lot of people. So, yeah, you definitely did. Like we were kind yeah. of like on the on the cusp yeah, of like for sure really. Yeah taking that training like to another level We've, like we went to one trip to utah like to film section for i don't even know what and like we were riding at the rampage site and then like we'd ride all day in the heat and then he'd, like we'd go back to hotel room and we'd be doing like sprints up and down and Crazy. like Crazy. and you know just we trained so much and then g and i won the 08 world champs right and it was like right that's 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 the secret Tr- just train really hard wow. yeah, you know? yeah 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 and wow. like we went every winter to california like yeah, to train I remember in the that. warm weather you guys would stay in laguna yeah and then Newport. people started coming like oh, brendan yeah. came out for a bit to train yeah. and like people started coming with us and, and you like, had a nearly i hate to bring it up but nearly had a like a career oh, ending yeah. crash there on the road right yeah on the, yeah oh, no. that was gnarly yeah and i remember dan saying like because g and i won 08 world champs and then you feel invincible like you win like that you feel like you're on top of the world like you're invincible and then and you have to believe that to be an athlete you know you have to believe mm-hmm. that that is you you are like you can do anything and then and then i had like a, that was it like i had basically five years of being injured like again mm. a year after year after year I had surgery after surgery yeah. after surgery and i thought this is not worth it. Like, I either need to win and be healthy or quit. Like, a stop. And I remember you spoke to like, me and Pete him on Yeah, and yeah. You were almost done. Yeah. You, well, you were Just done. Injury what year was that? Injury. Like, 2012, maybe? Like, yeah. 11, yeah. 12. Like, yeah, I got injured, like, yeah. 9, 10, 11, 12. Like, surgery, 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 surgery. At one point, it was like, I was sat at the kitchen table with G and I was like, there's something bad with my shoulder. Like it's still not fixed. And I remember Googling like um, posterior dislocation, which is like rearward dislocation. And then going like doing the movement that it described to dislocate it. Yeah. Okay. Ah, G, my shoulder's out. out. My shoulder's oh my out. God. Screaming in the kitchen table. Ah. G comes running in. Then I went to the doctor and I was like, look, it's definitely something wrong with it. Still. It's had another surgery. <sighs> yeah. And then was like, God damn, like something needs to change. Like I need to sort this out. And then just, I guess like, yeah, I'd managed to train and like finally sorted out those injuries. And then, yeah, 2013 won world champs again in South Africa. And then 2014 got like burnout, kind of got like, just took it to the other end of the scale, I guess, like just chronic fatigue, absolutely wrecked. And then again, like questioning, like, what is this? Like, how do you, how do you be good without ruining yourself? You know, how do you like, how do you like put, put in a hundred percent, but keep some back for for yourself you know so you can stay healthy and that year was like pretty rough 2014 I remember getting ill in South Africa and I was in hospital on a drip and I was absolutely like wrecked and I made myself like get out and and went to to do the race and I did the world cup I did two practice runs and then race got second and I was like I carried on doing that all year and just got worse and worse and worse and then the following winter like every time I trained I just got ill like I, I trained and then got ill and and really like finding alternative ways to like recover and and that's when I discovered acupuncture and like traditional kind of Chinese acupuncture like not for like a bad back or something but for like your energy systems and for like your your health and like that and I I attribute you know so much of my success to 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 acupuncture like do you discovering that then I had no idea about that yeah that that I think I probably would have quit if I if it hadn't have been for finding that in in California like I think we were in like just north of Laguna or somewhere like 
So and it, it, why? Because they it, it put was, needles into your nervous system, in the nerves, right? What it kind of yeah, just well, it's it's more like yeah, your energy systems are all linked, and like you know, you're training like the gym. It all just drains you like repeatedly, and the way we live so in this like Western world, it's so it's just so depleting all the time. Like well, yeah, it's the way and, you and being way an you athlete, train, yeah, just true. rinsing yourself again and again yeah. and again, and not topping that cut back up, injury like not filling injury, it, yeah, recovery even just recovery. racing, like yeah. it's yeah. You, people don't realize, like it's just so demanding, and winning is even worse. Like I remember Valley saying to me, like it's so much more when you win, like everything's yeah. more. Like you've got, you know. <laughs> If you win, you've got to go to doping and then you've got interviews and then you've got, you're celebrating and you often don't eat until like, you know, nine, 10 at night. And that, if you do that regularly, you're not like, you're not looking after yourself. And if you get second, you back in your tent having a sandwich like an hour later. You you wouldn't have settled for second. (laughs) No, but like, yeah, it's just a lot to, to continually put your body through. So for me, like finding acupuncture definitely like prolonged my career and helped me win like more and more and more. And, and I'd go back in and, and I'd be like, she'd be like, are you s- still racing? And I'd be like, yes. <laughs> She'd be like, you really should stop. <laughs> Your body's telling you. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll do uh, another year or two. <laughs> I mean, and mentally, you think with 40 World Cup wins to your name that it was like, it feels like you're sort of winning at ease. But mentally, I know it was, it never got any easier for you, right, Rachel? I mean, you still would be, pretty much oh, like yeah. sick at the most days I think, of if a anything World it gets Cup, worse right? I did think. it really yeah because yeah. that expectation and pressure and the knowledge that you that, put on yourself yeah yeah and and no well no everyone, everyone yeah because you, you, you do put it on yourself but also when you get to a point like everyone expects you to win and, totally and yeah. like mm. You, mm. you know if you're second they're like oh what went wrong and you're right. like oh, God. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know but like I don't know it, it all just gets more and more doesn't it you know I think I got to the point where it was like everyone gets faster because you set the bar and then they catch you up and, and they do, you know, you, that's how it goes in any sport. You, yeah. Everyone gets quicker. So you get quicker and quicker. And I guess like knowing that, that I used to, the last few years, I was, it's like, damn, like this is on, like it's going to go down this afternoon. Like this, this mm. is going to be did you enjoy... as much as I can give. And that's a scary position to be in, you know, which, which one did you enjoy the most? Like when you would go out and win by whatever, 20 oh, seconds? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Definitely. That, Never those, thought of the commentary team. Those those were, those yeah. those felt better than the like, I had to give it every single thing I, I had and uh, I won by half a second yeah. or something. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think like, yeah, like digging deep, like it isn't, it's good in a way that you have to like, like 2018 world champs, which I assumed would, like that was probably one of my last races and then lens are hard. I was like, I, you know, you know, it's going to be a year or so in advance. I was like, shit, I'm not very good at that track. It's a bike park style track. Like it's loads of burns. I'm shit at burns. Like, okay, I'm going to need to like bring my A game. And I remember all week, like, oh, fuck, I just like, I know I'm not going to do very well. Like, and really like, really just, just drew on every ex- like bit of experience and and like tried just so hard and like just made everything made sure it was it was just I worked so hard and I won by 10 seconds and like and then the the ones where it it never feels easy but the yeah I, th- I think the a bigger winning margin is way cooler but <laughs> it, it's it's cool after the fact to, to have to work hard for it right or harder but you at the time you don't think it's gonna go it's going to be easy. You know, never know. You don't know, like, I'm going to win this by 10 seconds. No, and I, you could see that, like, even when you were winning 40 in a row. Yeah, people were like, of course you know you're going to win. That's I'm like, right. what? No, but I know you, you didn't. Like, yeah, you no. still put yourself through it every week. Yeah. Like, you were clearly the best in the world by a margin, but you probably didn't recognise that. Yeah, and like, I remember the finals, at the, the the perfect season, the final at Andorra, and I was like, my back was wrecked. Like, I was... I could barely walk, like it was so wrecked. And I remember saying to Brownie, like, I can't do it. I can't even race. Like, Brownie, I can't. Like, this is it. I'm out. I was so gutted. And he was like, You can't race. You've got to just try. Like, I fucking can't do it. Like, I can't even walk, Brownie. Like, and physio, like, just all the time. And I, and I managed to win. And like, it, it just never. And you'd think by then, nearly two years of winning, you'd. It, everyone thinks it's easy but it's not it's never and they're always there like they're always just like waiting you know nearly nearly coming yeah and it's yeah you've got to be on your a game to win of course you have 100 percent. 
Yeah, apart from maybe Lenzerheide last year. <laughs> no, you, were on, you were on your own game there. I don't know. I, I, yeah. Ridiculous. I you sat down off of it. <laughs> but you won. You won. Well, yeah, it was strategic. strategic. In that way, <laughs> like you uh, you talked about a little bit how you would set the bar and then, you know, these these women or like Well, just someone up. sets the bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody sets the bar. What was that? Uh, like, how do you view the women's field and like the progression and especially coming back? I yeah. mean, I know you won, but what is it like now do you think when you look at it from the outside or even when um, you're racing this year or this past year well i mean yeah i think every year everything always gets a bit faster doesn't it you can't not really you know everything everyone it sort of trains a bit yeah. yeah you progress every year you train a bit harder and even over like a season everyone's skills develop more and i think it's it's amazing to see like you know i can remember probably not even that long ago like not not many years ago where you know a lot of the, the jumps wouldn't be done like a lot only a top few women would do the jumps and now like that's probably been the most noticeable thing like the depth of talent like right the yeah. girls that don't even qualify are so good you know yeah. like they're yeah. so talented you're like you watch them and honestly that lens hide race i was like oh my god and the first day of practice i was like what like the well, technical yeah. new section they were all like hopping over the big route and off the thing and at the top and i was like i can't even ride down that like <laughs> did it? I was and like, how was that mentally for you though shit. Was it, like, like you... honestly 100 percent. i was like <laughs> were you thinking what am i doing here at that yeah point? i was like were you really what? and how did you recover then to make yourself know that you were competitive by those finals because you can't win without some I think confidence you, yeah, I was just like, right, I know I can ride down here because I've done it before. Like, of course I can, of course I can. And like, and like, that's where you've just got to like ride your own, you know, race or stay in your own lane. Like, you've got to just. I know that people are better than me at some things, and I'm better. At, like, you can't look to other people. Like, it it just kills you. It doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing. If you're always comparing yourself to other people, you, you're never gonna concentrate on what you know what you're doing and put put the energy in the right place you know put the energy into into the things you can control because that's the only way like I've spent so much time wasting my time and energy watching the other girls doing lines that I know I'm not going to do because hmm. for whatever reason hmm. they don't suit me and and Lenzerheide was like yeah it was I mean I I I definitely won that race because my experience 100% you know Fair I, enough. And, yeah and, and that's why I did it you know I knew it was the shortest track I knew that they probably hadn't like they probably all over the place with the schedule changes, like the first race, no one knows what they're doing. They're all in like party mode still. Like, and I was <laughs> like, if I can win one, it's this short, right. slightly easier track that like I can, I've got a good history on, like I'm comfortable on it. And I just stayed in my own lane. I, well, actually, no, I wasn't trying to win. I 100% wasn't, you know, even after qualies when I was second, like I didn't think I'd win. No way. Who was fastest in qualies? Uh, Cami, I think, yeah. Was she? Yeah. Who's the best woman now? Like, I mean, Valley. On... Don't even bother asking. Valley, <laughs> of course. By what? In, in your mind, by a long way. She's like unreal. Like her she? bike mm. skills are just f phenomenal. Like you can see she's grown up. Like no disrespect to anyone, you know. Like, but you know, pom poms of like my slightly older generation. Nina's not been riding for very long. Like, so she's sick, but. You can see, like, she hasn't grown up on a bike. Like, you can see, mm. like, she gets sketchy and she yeah, gets she into, does. like, yeah. s s like moments. You can see Valley is, like, she's grown up riding. Like, you can see that. Even Cammy hasn't been riding for as long. Like, no. And, you know, Valley is technical. Like, her mindset's caught up. and she's, she's caught up. I was going to say, because yeah. she, she, she struggled she's a bit. Of course she has. So like, impressive. Look up, but there was so much pressure on her, which I'm sure yeah, you can yeah, relate to. Yeah. But now that she's there and she can win everything, would you do you expect her to like be the next Jew to ride with that much success to to be a uh, record I don't see breaker? Why not. Yeah, do you? I don't see why not. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I I can't really see for for a couple of years. Like obviously there'll be challenges, but you know overall, like I think sort of dominating. It's it's always coming back to her really. Yeah, and everyone's always looking to her. I think Gracie Hemstreet could be could be like a challenger in a good in a few years once she like sorts out her training and her like race craft and stuff but yeah. because just because her bike skills are again like so good would you ever think about being a like a riding coach and stuff like i haven't really seen it that much in mountain biking but in so many other sports like i think about motocross like yeah. some of the best people no, you like don't you want have... any coaching off me <laughs> but you you say that but then like the the way that you just talked about it and able to like break down everyone's strengths and weaknesses and mindsets and mm. physical like 
yeah, I mean, I do enjoy it and I do feel like, I feel like I've got a lot to, to give and offer and I've never had the opportunity properly with like riders on our own team or I, I've, I've definitely, like Valley and I've, although we've never been on the same team, like I've definitely like had a lot of conversations with her um yeah that's but for sure you, i can't you, really be bothered to be honest like <laughs> <laughs> it's like all the hard work with none of the kind of yeah. reward of doing the fun bit oh well, yeah that's true <laughs> i don't enough. know that's what i'm at at the moment like trying to figure out like what is it that right. that is enjoyable and what is the next step because you know i love i love like the analysis and but also i don't know there is a there's another life out there i don't know mm -hmm. I, I just i just don't know really yeah and the dream say, would be to have like have a woman on the team that I can that I can like put right. you know give that knowledge to but that's a whole different kind of yeah conversation really so yeah I, I feel like um it's interesting you talk about the team because <laughs> that's been another thing that's just incredible you guys won your first world championship oh, with yeah. with Charlie My, yeah oh man last what was year that was feel unreal. what did Whoa. that feel like oh well, when Andreas won in Leogang, like I won in Lenzerheide and honestly, like I just kind of felt like a bit empty and a bit numb about the whole yeah. thing. Like I yeah, knew what right. I had to feel on paper and or, like what I should be feeling. It was so bizarre. Was yeah, it? because not only did like, you win the race, but you won on your own bike. Like yeah, yeah and I said to well, G, like right. no, but I won before. Like that's why I kept racing really because I would have retired after 2018, and and then we did the bike company. And I was like, oh, for God's sake, I'm gonna have to keep racing because I want to race <laughs> no on my own out. bikes, obviously. <laughs> yeah, then I won Andorra. Uh, on it and then no i won fort william on it actually first and then andorra and then this year uh Lenzerheide. and honestly like andreas winning in leogang on it was better than anything wow. it was, was it? unreal well, as good as you winning oh, did it feel like way good? better yeah honestly. it was so yeah, good no, uh, was it i felt like oh man I, I mainly just felt really aggressive like i was just like <laughs> i was so fired up i probably had about 300 red bulls i was like <laughs> I just felt, I was just like full of, I just thought of Brownie's face, like back yeah. at the office, everyone, like just the sacrifice Brownie's put into this, you know. And what about Charlie like, winning in Fort William then? In World champion. In rain, like <laughs> That must have been on another level again. Well, that was just like, Andreas, you could kind of, it was come in, you could feel it. And yeah. Charlie's win has been come in, but no one had even thought of it, you know, to be win world champs at fort william didn't he ride beautifully though? like we were in the back of the lorry it was hammering it down with rain halfway through the men's and we were like Phew. i was like i can't be asked to go and watch like i'm not going to go over and stand in the rain and watch another frenchy win like <laughs> i'm not going to do that and then we we're like oh god come on come on and then we got over there and bloody charlie i think he was probably already down on the hot seat and we were like what <laughs> it was the worst weather I had about yeah. three enduro jackets on yeah. gave one to charlie on the hot seat bless him we didn't have anything on and then rider after rider coming down like we were just absolutely soaked and brownie we were like come on we were just all stood there like dead still and silent not talking can i just gonna win he's gonna win this and we were just like it was nuts we were all shaking like oh my god his mum and dad like we were all just there and i don't even think you know like the coolest thing after was the videos of andreas when he crossed the line and you could see the disappointment they hadn't gone into the lead and then he turns around and sees Charlie in the hot seat and his face like his bro like he's they're like so close and that was just like the coolest day and it it was just overwhelming really because Charlie didn't expect it and even though obviously he's capable of it because he did it but to to have Athen bike in its fourth year to be men's like elite world champ and and that's why it felt better when Andy won because you know no disrespect to the women at all to us but to win a man's elite world cup is just that's the cream of the crop really in it so yeah it was pretty cool to to have Athen bikes take on the the big giants like so quick so yeah, soon yeah right. like yeah. we didn't think you know in the boys like testament to the boys like Andy and Charlie like They've, they're such good riders, they're so talented and yeah. they've worked damn hard to, to come up through the ranks. We never thought that we'd be able to, you know, have or afford a, like a winning men's rider. Well, no, that's right. And Did, what, what changed though? Is it, the, is it Andy and Charlie getting better as riders or also like to me, all of a sudden it felt like the bike was there. Like all of a sudden the bike 
was, it was much everything. better. Than, yeah, like, is that, it's just like was it from yeah, us? yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, Andy and Charlie's relationship is is amazing, and like the team works so well. Like Ben, the Bens, both mechanics, and everyone is just so fi- having that dynamic, finding that in a team that works really well is super important. And you know, Lloydie, Brownie, everyone, everyone like the bike is obviously. It's, it, I mean, it's the same suspension platform as it was on day one, so it's not wholly different. But been obviously, and... yeah, we've done a lot of like even more testing every year. You know, to even for me to even win on a bike in the first year of like prototyping is is ridiculous. Yeah, that's right. And then four years later, it's winning the elite men's. It, it's it's testament to the yeah to the bike really. You know, to, absolutely. It it was born to be it was born already so good it didn't yeah. take much to you tweak mentioned it. um dan brown a bunch can you tell <laughs> can you tell the audience like who that is like he's yeah yeah been with you guys forever yeah yeah uh, i mean yeah dan brown started as a racer himself he's from the shropshire shrewsbury the uk he's um yeah started he's a bike lover he started racing he then went on to like manage and run a local bike shop and then back in the day way back in the day 2007 maybe we were looking for a team manager to help us sort our chaotic <laughs> load of <laughs> stuff out and he was a brave man to take you <laughs> he, was, he, was. <laughs> he was he was yeah he was. And Bra- but brownie's like he's cool because he's like into surfing and like snowboarding and and that really helped us grow outside of the in- industry not outside the industry but grow like as in a way that people. wasn't just mountain biking yeah. you know like right? so we started the athlete projects there's lots of surf kind of behind the scenes documentary yeah, stuff yeah, like that yeah. that wasn't just the same thing that you see in mountain biking all the time and brownie's basically been with us basically from the day dot really and um and has grown into team manager of the race team and he's had you know martin mize kate edwards you know g and i um riders become world champ under his team yeah. management um, he has, he's this legend. Yeah, of and he's so quiet pits. and stuff. Yeah, behind the scenes. And now he's CEO of Atherton Bikes. So he is actually CEO of Atherton Bikes and sort of doesn't do much with the race team. Um, and that's him learning so quickly on the job. Like, you know, and he's, we've worked a lot with other bike brands like Trek and GT and Commissar. And we've designed a lot of bikes with them. Yeah. And and we've had like quite a lot of experience working with, with them and... and you're always starting with a bike that's basically designed already and you're just tweaking it which is kind of cool but frustrating like cool to even be involved but it's 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 a whole nother level of running running the the bike company and he's learning quick (laughs) he's learning on the job like he's but you know and i remember having a conversation with Trek, like when i rode for them last year the last year and they were like you know we had a great ride with Trek, and it was cool and but they were like you know what what do you owe brownie like why why mm-hmm. stay in like and i was like you know him everything like yeah. you know owe him everything and we've got more to give like i'm not leaving so right. amazing yeah he's you know he's, you can do so much with the right people around you and yeah You've hopefully got the right people around you i think yeah you know i mean and you can see your like, level of racing hmm. i actually don't know what you can see but he's st- <laughs> still doing it <laughs> and like it to be able to like just for him like he he loves racing like yeah. these people yeah you can you can you, see they've it got yeah. A love, yeah, yeah, and, yeah and for him to have that this year like to, to have the race team deliver what they did cool. was just like to be able to give something back because you know it's the, the company's tiny like we don't there's no money like nothing's going like it's going well but like you know it's still a, a little company and yeah it's Incredible. hard work you for know? how yeah. much yeah. you've yeah. achieved it's yeah yeah i mean it's, i think people don't even realize you know right we've talked about man we've talked about so many things but the yeah, one thing we, bit... <laughs> we haven't one thing we haven't even touched on which is a huge thing is um it's hardline oh yeah so like the uk version there's another one now mm-hmm. um but the uk version whose idea was that and like how has um oh the uk version or the australian one no the, the uk the, right, right, the, right, right. The, <laughs> the, the, the welsh one yeah yeah well yeah, yeah it's 10th year this year for hardline yeah um which is mad it is isn't it yeah yeah it's 2014 mad. the chaos of 
bikes and people landing in trees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never forget yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. It started yeah. with like, I don't know, 20 or 30 yeah. riders. There were six left for the was final. There, was there? Uh, yeah. Actually, it, yeah, 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 it was like, honestly, six or eight, wasn't it? It was yeah, insane. It wasn't really, yeah. <laughs> oh my. It, yeah, it's taken a long time to get yeah, riders like to come back. Man, the decade. Yeah. That was the thing, like, because I was racing at the time and like, yeah. it was always just like, eh, hey, like, you're going to come to Hardline and like, I was never super <laughs> was nervous like, about the, I was never super nervous about the jumps, but like, yeah, exactly, you talk about yeah. Dan and like he would build these like rudy gnarly sections yeah, like yeah in world, between the jumps yeah like yeah. more gnarly than the gnarliest world cup track yeah. and then like 50 60 foot jump like and that's what why hardline is so hard you know what doesn't maybe come across as much on on tv it's not just big jumps it's not just it's the tech and like even down to the what tire pressure do you run to get yeah. you over that right. jump, but yeah, you've got yeah, a grip yeah, on yeah. this like slippery rock section. Yeah, you know? that's right. Like that's why it's so hard. And and yeah, I mean Hardline, we we've had a track on that hill on where Hardline is. Like that track has been there for years, and mm. it used to be the gnarliest track. It's your legacy. Yeah, I remember walking like 16 years old, like walking down the rock gardens and stuff. And Petey and yeah, Pagey came to ride, and I think. Petey broke his finger he and yeah. got stuck in <laughs> what, what is now like the top the top section like there was a rock section there and like where the boys come out off that first drop and the berm that was where Steve crashed and he was so pissed off um, but yeah and I think Dan's just always had this vision to he just wants to push things doesn't he mm. he wants to push everything he wanted to push he's on another level of pushing just because it <laughs> excites him really yeah <laughs> yeah no he is isn't he i mean that's true well yeah We've not got... for like not to be like oh let's make people crash you know yeah, like yeah. no like that yeah. it's he like won't... that's right it's well he puts dry, his money where his it? mouth is yeah. yeah like last year was it last year when he tried the on off or the year before and he absolutely nailed himself well a few years he's done that <laughs> true it's hard to point it's hard yeah. to place the finger exactly on the right yeah because one year it was was he nailed himself testing the hard line yeah and they realized it was like a shark fin like hip thing and that was the night for world champs and then we were on the phone to him g and i like and they were like how do you put a shoulder it's dislocated shoulder how do you put it back in and we were like i just yank it like and they were pulling so hard he was screaming <laughs> anyway it turns out it wasn't dislocated he's broken his scapula <laughs> and so they were just pulling on this broken oh, scapula <laughs> oh, no. and then the next night after world champs i i managed to win and then we were at the party and bernard was giving it all his big uh oh hardline's gonna be rubbish if i don't come you need me to come to make a good event <laughs> so i smashed him in the face <laughs> i think i'm more slapped him but then there was tears and he was crying oh and, uh, what that was so funny <laughs> oh, that's so but i was like funny. affy's put so much into this event like don't you dare start yeah. talking like it's not going to be any good unless you turn up we've, oh, yeah. we've since sorted it out but you know yeah. dan just wants to yeah like world cup i think well i think it got to the point where world cups were like you know we all like they've got to be and maybe that's where they're trying to go like it's they're not quite hard enough like it's the best thing in the world like they're not hard to you, for the you best do, riders in the right, world like, like you can these ride guys them, are so but, good yeah, yeah. they and don't show necessarily what the world's best are capable yeah, of yeah yeah right, and yeah, it, yeah. maybe they do more now but like 10 years ago maybe they were, absolutely right so yeah. it was there was people like wanted things they wanted a hard something harder really. yeah, so yeah yeah that's kind of how hardline was born and Dan wanted to, yeah, push and Red Bull are obviously always up for progression. Kind of, yeah, been been the leaders in things, you yeah. know, showing what can be done and 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 now it's kind of expanding, hopefully, you know, going further and further globally. And yeah, it's a cool like new era, I think. It's, yeah, but it is. It's absolutely it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 absolutely Red Bull, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Just to do yeah. Bonkers yeah. Like yeah. That. Does yeah. it feel like uh I guess because at first it was it really did feel like an Atherton race, right? I mean, and I say that in more ways than one. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Like, G was one of those dudes who would win a World Cup and then go to Rampage and get a top three or yeah. whatever. And there wasn't many that, that many people that could ride that type of terrain. But now, you said it's been going for 10 years and it's expanded to, to Australia, to Tasmania. How, do, how does that feel now? Yeah, it's definitely, like, it's cool. I think it's... Is always going to be any expan expansion is you can't keep control of it really you know like Dan he's not going over every weekend to Australia to you know <laughs> like see what's going on help them out but you've got to let that go if you want 
things to grow and like it's it's no, it's by no means like our event it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a red bull event and it's you know red bull australia have, have kind of taken it on and it's kind of it's growing you know it it's still hopefully gonna have afi's touch on it and and have have them involved but it's kind of yeah it's it's it grows and that's kind of what you want for for an event to you, know, you can't a good feeling though to see what's you know that started on your yeah it's pretty mad we haven't really thought about it really. yeah that's right and now it's, it's rolling kind of... out into a global series step by step yeah I mean... Ho well hopefully yeah i mean it, it's kind of yeah i think not any of these things you just don't really think about them really you just just carries on like life just kind of happens and it moves yeah everything moves all the time if yeah you don't move with it you get left yeah behind. exactly yeah so does that as we kind of wrap up i i always think it's interesting talking to someone who's done so much accomplished so much <clears throat> do you when you look back and reminisce about like last 10 years do you have like a special moment that you think about a lot um yeah all of them <laughs> I, it's hard to like they're all different really for their own reasons you know yeah like i i would be fascinated to know like, i think, what you about think about when g gets hurt i think about when i've won with him and like when g and i've won together like when he gets hurt and has one of his horrible accidents must uh, must affect you rach to see your brother yeah it's, like that. Yeah, it's horrible it, it's it is horrible you know and at the end of the day like y y your family they're your family more than their kind of bike riders and stuff but tight bond between you lot that's for sure yeah yeah there, there is and you know i haven't got many friends like close friends and stuff and it's always probably why because you kind of dan and g have always been there to fill that kind of gap and it's horrible to see g go through the stuff he's been through in the last few years but also inspirational and i i didn't want to admit it to him like when he rode hardline after his ridgeline crash i didn't want to be like oh well done that's so cool because it is Don't amazing encourage him. yeah exactly yeah <laughs> right. like it's like what and he doesn't Hard. even tell the half of it like yeah. he did not even show the half of what he went through after that crash in his leg and you know he's the hardest man I he know. just yeah, doesn't for sure he's he just oh so stiff goodness. upper lip man just yeah. so the british I've ever he is met. yeah and no he's so so tough something. yeah and i i didn't want to be like oh, so amazing G, but it is it is so cool like yeah to see him come back and you know he just loves it like like There's been do. a lot of chat around it, and and like, if you if something drives you that much, and something you do it like, why I went back to a World Cup and raced a World Cup, and I was no way I was ready for that, and and G's doing the same, and then we're all giving him shit for it, you know. So sure. like, it, it's because it, it, you love it, and it it makes you tick, and like Afi says, it yeah. make what makes you get out of bed in the morning, you know why? That's why you live. That's, and that's what you're we're alive. all searching for. Yeah, and and it's no one's place to say like oh you, that's okay for you to do that but not for you to do that like it's not hurting anyone else so just just let and you know. it's insanely difficult if you've got a passion to, to, to find something that can replace yeah, exactly. it, isn't it even yeah. now you've got a kid and stuff if, it's yeah, still i yeah. can see i got like one before before I do wrap things up rach so you know you know i'm a stats man 40 world cup wins <laughs> yeah, I, AC, I, I don't know anything apart from what you AC tell me <laughs> and caroline shows on top oh, 40 well <laughs> well you know favorite question. No one it's knows, my yeah, favorite it's, no one knows how many everyone i ask is everyone says a different you number you won off the all-time record of acc the greatest you know a gold medalist in bmx you respect her, you know it and for me and i don't even know your thoughts but like I would love you to get one more World Cup win and I would love you and Anne Caroline to share that top spot. But is that yeah, but something... why? What difference would it make to anything? Because you'd be at the top in the history books and that's where you belong. In my opinion, there's her from there the old... There isn't actually a book though. <laughs> there don't need to be no book. There's the respect of your peers. I don't know, but are we going to see you? Are you done, Rach? Are you coming back? My What's... joints are like quaking now with fear. Wow, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, uh, there would there? have been like a few years ago, even it was like, it was annoying. And I like, I love that, that challenge, but what's the point, you know, like why, like, it's not going to change anything. No. The more you win, the more you realize that actually it's lonely up there. Like it doesn't change anything. You get home, the house is still a mess. You still feel super lonely on a Monday because <laughs> everyone's at work. Like yeah. it doesn't actually make you any happier. Like your trophies just gather dust, like one's outside propping the bloody bin up, like, <laughs> 
you know like there's no like it doesn't actually make a difference to anything no, like I'm... it doesn't and i wish it did i honestly no one wishes it more than me i wish that that one more win would make me complete or happy like mm. it, and it doesn't but oh, the no, the wouldn't. the risks or like the consequences of the rest of your life with another injury like the, mm. or your, another joint like waking yeah. up at night another thing that's yeah. in pain like that is real and and now i feel like i can't i i just can't what's the point you know i would love to because if i win one if more you sign off where she you won left the, it and carrie won the olympics and then that'll be the next thing you're on about mm. oh, no, the olympics. <laughs> right, can we get you on a 20 inch <laughs> so yeah like i'm happy man like yeah good no that's nice well, that's I'm, really nice to hear and maybe happy to be extreme but so that's, a, that's amazing like to listen to. You know, a, you're right that's you a beautiful it's a beautiful way i mean i probably will keep chasing it forever but like and if you do leave it where you leave it then what a beautiful place to leave it winning because baby that's insane for me that's why it's so yeah. hard to leave competition and, and racing and, and being an athlete because you know what is what is next like what is important and I have got absolutely no idea how to be a human how to be a real life adult without yeah. racing and without that as my fallback oh sorry I'm in a bad mood I've overtrained or you know sorry I'm in a bad mood I'm just tired from sprints like no sorry I'm in a bad mood because you're just a bit of a bitch like just, <laughs> and I need to learn how to be an, a, a, like just. a human yeah so. civilian life yeah, yeah. yeah like true. the rest of us yeah that's yeah. right and it's something true. will come I, yeah I, of it course it sounds like you might feel a little I don't know well, you say, of it's course. Difficult, but <laughs> no, but I, I, next step I, well, I, we, it's we, interesting. Yeah. We had the, we've had this conversation, like we had this conversation, um, between, you know, Rob and Brett Reader and I, like, man, yeah, cause the, he's like, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah like, man, I did even for but me. I feel like, like it's like people, it, it's like a touchy subject, isn't it? No one wants to talk about it until, but it's annoying that cause everyone will go through it at some point yeah you know? yeah when do you stop like what's yeah. next like how do you process that how do you like and it's really hard to find like any to, to find much kind of you know inspiration or hmm. it, and even people that have gone through it don't they still don't really talk about about it really yeah and and then it's becomes even harder because you've got to pretend that it's all fine and like yeah. there isn't a big hole left and that's right but there is yeah and, and, right, and, then there is. and then a whole of probably a hormonal imbalance from not having that adrenaline like when after I had Anna it got to the point where I was so bored of like just not doing anything extreme I'd find myself driving like really fast like back <laughs> from the shops and be like oh my god like, I need to get out and do something just, you know like I miss this rush and yeah like, you're, you're searching for it it's right yeah uh, it's Rachel mad. we could talk to you <laughs> yeah. forever you have a, right. you have a, a train to catch Oh, yeah. <laughs> now you're going to be pinned on one of those <laughs> rental bikes. Oh, yeah. my God. Boris bike. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. in yeah. trouble. It's in trouble. I need yeah, some, I I got a need for speed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you oh, so yeah, much thanks for, for coming. Right, thanks yeah. for coming all the way down so from cool. North Wales. Absolute yeah. pleasure. Yeah. 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 Anytime good. we speak to you is a special time. Totally. Oh, thanks, really boys. Is. Yeah, it was good. Thank you. Thank you. All good. Boom. Rob, I love that we finally got to have this long form interview with Rachel you know we had her on beyond the line for yeah. a little interview last season we also had her in the studio but again it was like this little interview and I feel like Rachel um you know not only is she doing so much she has so many projects going but she has this incredible experience and this incredible way of kind of seeing the world and this and the sport yeah absolutely she's incredibly unique you know which She's incredibly successful as well. Yeah. But like, I think, I don't know, whenever you speak to Rachel, like, I was really looking forward to her coming in it today because it's always a different conversation. She doesn't hold anything back. She's yeah. real. She's brutal. She is, she is a racer. That's what she is. Like, yeah. And that's all she knows. And that's everything she knows. And, you know, it's quite interesting to hear her that she's always struggling a little bit like, that she knows that yeah, it's kind of the end of her I, career or towards the end of totally. it you know she wouldn't really say but, right right but, well i think it's you know i don't know it's been it's been interesting talking to so many athletes um myself as i've gotten done racing like we you know we mentioned in the podcast but we had the conversation with brett reader and mm. and just like there has to be a transition period it like does. there's just no way that you can race for that long be that successful and like she says i think for me it was the same the process was the most interesting part like i loved 
everything in my life just being for this one thing. I get up and I'm training and I'm thinking about it. I'm working on it. I go to the the gym. I go to my chiropractor. I, I go to my yeah. nutritionist. Like yeah. that. And then you, you have to, you know, she's had to transition from that to being a mother, yeah. which is, you know, as she said, is the hardest job in the world. Um, Definitely. And so I'm, I'm loving seeing her go through the process. Yeah, know? that's right. And to see her come back and win as a mother. Yeah. You know, but she's, there's not, in many ways, it's not, there's not that much emotion yeah, attached right. to those wins with her. You know, yeah. it's like, that's what yeah. she does. And that's yeah. what always, I think that's what always, well, she's I, just real. And that's what yeah. really like surprises me. Every time yeah. we chat to her, every time she's just, yeah, she's just brutally honest. She's I no think fluff. that that was like the, uh, when she said that at the end, like, yeah, I don't care about the record. Like, for what? Like, it doesn't... That's right. It doesn't matter. Like, but, you know, either that or her head is going to chase <laughs> that last win. And you, yeah. you know, and you know, know her a little bit. She's kind of got a sign off on it. I, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. An incredible human being, Rachel Afferton is. It really, no other way of putting her. Incredible family, not just totally. Rachel. Yeah, That's totally. That's right, man. There I ain't know. nothing. There ain't no one like them three. Yeah. There is not. It is so true. Yeah. Well... As you know, you can always get in touch with us, podcast at redbull.com. Hit us up. Let us know what you want to see. Guests, suggestions, comments, questions. Um, you can also reach us on our socials, Red Bull Bike, you know, Elliot Jackson and Rob Warner. Yep. What is that? Rob Warner 970. 970. There you go. Yep. All right. And, you know, it matters. We like getting all those messages. Yeah, we yeah, love sure. it. Yeah. And there is a new episode of Just Ride Season 2 <laughs> every other Tuesday. It's available to listen to wherever you get your podcast. If you want to watch the full-length episodes, of course, if you want to see me and Elliot, you daft things, <laughs> then it's all available on Red Bull TV and redbull.com. See you soon. You will. <laughs>